What's up folks? Today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play the game Manhunt. This game comes from Milton Bradley. It was created in 1972 and it is for 2 to 6 players. Now the object of Manhunt is you are going to be trying to find the culprit who has committed a crime. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be uh, driving to different locations and trying to uh, pick up clues and then from those clues you're going to just try to deduce who is the person that committed the crime. Uh, and there's also a very unique component in this game called the Electric Crime Computer. Ooh. So let's show you how to play Manhunt. Okay everybody, let's go ahead and show you the components really quick. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the cars here. There's six different colored cars and they look like this. Um, in the beginning of the game, you're going to choose one of these badges over here to start your car on. So in this case, let's just say I have uh, two of the players start over there. Right here we have what is called your clue scanner and uh, this is what you're going to be using uh, to uh, find out clues as to who committed the different crimes. And right here you have your scanner cards and there's a whole bunch of these and you're basically going to uh, select one of these scanner cards and you are going to go ahead and uh, put it in here like this. Uh, now there are three different crimes that you are going to be able to choose from to try to solve. One of them is robbery, one of them is murder, and then one of them is swindling. Uh, so once you decide which crime you're going to go ahead and do, each person is going to receive what is called the detective's handbook. Um, this basically has a list of all the different locations on here. And if you open this up, this is going to uh, have all these different things here. And then this little uh, space over here is where you're going to write down the clue. So here's how the scanner basically works. Let's just say I landed on space one over here. And uh, I have here my little probe that I'm going to use. And I'm going to poke, poke it in here. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the clue that does not have a red dot uh, on it. So, and in this case, we have got D with the red dot, uh, as you can see. So what's going to happen is that is going to be uh, the clue that I'm going to write down. So here is uh, the little uh, clue booklet that you're going to use. And uh, the first thing is you're going to look at your chart over here. Let's just say I decide I was going to, we were going to do robberies, for example. Um, the first clue, which was D, is going to be burglary. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this handbook over here and write the word burglary in here and then uh, mark off the D. Uh, now what you're going to see is the list of suspects on the next few pages. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. I think there's about 16 or 17 different suspects. And what you're going to do is you're going to look to see uh, what information each one has. So since I landed on a space one and uh, the clue is burglary, I'm going to try to look for somebody who has that uh, here in their information. So as you can see, uh, Marie over here it has burglary, uh, two has burglary, three has burglary, four has burglary, uh, burglary, burglary. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of burglaries over here. Um, but as you uh, continue on, here we have safe cracker. So you're going to know that she didn't do it. Uh, you're going to know she didn't do it because she's also a safe cracker, etc. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to travel to these different locations, uh, getting these different clues, and uh, then writing them down in your detective handbook. And then you're going to be using process of elimination to try to figure out who committed the crime. Uh, so now here is the electric crime computer. And there's three different things on here. Uh, you have numbers. This is what is going to determine how far you're going to move. You have your online and your offline. This is going to uh, determine whether or not you're going to be able to pick up your clue once you land onto the location. And then you have broadcast and receive. And this is going to be used to try to see if you can uh, either receive a clue from another player or if you're going to be giving another player a clue. And I'll talk about how that works here in just a second. So anyway, the way you move, you're just going to go ahead and turn this thing on like so. And you're going to let that start spinning. And then you're going to go ahead and stop. Uh, this landed on three, so I'm going to go ahead and move three, one, two, three. Uh, now, in order to get to a scene, I'm going to have to land on there by exact count. Uh, so if I can't get there by exact count, I'm going to have to move around somewhere else. So let's just say on my next turn, I roll, then I roll a five. So I can go one, two, three, four, five. So in order to get to uh, scene one, I'm going to have to go ahead and roll a two. Now, what I'm going to have to do first is I have to visit scene one and scene two first, and then after that, I will be able to go and travel to any location that I would like to on the board to collect clues. So let's just go ahead and say that I spun a two and I ended up landing on number one. Whenever you land on one of these uh, locations, you're going to spin this thing and you're going to try to see if you're going to be able to receive the information uh, using this online offline. Um, if it lands on online like it did, you will go ahead and be able to use the clue scanner here. And if it lands on offline, there's offline. And if it lands on offline, you're going to have to wait until your next turn and try again until you can get an online, and then you'll be able to receive the information. 
So what I'll, so what I'll do is I'll grab the clue scanner. I'm going to go ahead and uh, search around. And uh, again, D is the one that did not show up uh, with the red dot. So then I'll go ahead and take my little detective handbook and uh, mark D. And as you saw in the uh, clue booklet, burglary. So I'll go ahead and write burglary in here. And that will be uh, the end of my clue searching. So then I'll have to go to scene two and I'll repeat the process. Uh, let's say I ended up going to scene two. Uh, once again, I would go ahead and stick the probe in here like so and try to figure out which uh, one is uh, is empty. Letter A is empty on this. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go through the book again. And since I was doing robberies, uh, letter A is explosives used. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and put explosives used uh, here in scene two. And then, of course, I'll have my little uh, suspect book to where I'm going to go ahead and look through to see who uh, used explosives. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start trying to use the process of elimination uh, down here. As you can see, there's 16 suspects. Uh, any suspects that do not match any of the clues on here, I can just go ahead and start marking off. And uh, that's basically what you're going to do. You're just going to go start traveling around to these different locations. Now, here's a couple of interesting things. If you end up landing uh, on a, a, the same space as a player, you're going to have an opportunity to try to see if you can get some information from them. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and spin this thing in hopes that you're going to land on receive. If you land on receive, the player that you landed on is going to have to reveal one of his clues to you. Uh, if it lands on broadcast, then the player is going to have an opportunity to look at one of your clues. So let's just say I went ahead and spun this and it landed on receive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically pick a number and then that player is going to go ahead and uh, reveal to me his clue. So let's just say I said, okay, I want you to show me the clue number three. Uh, what I, he would do is he would just simply reveal this and let's just say he happened to have C marked off. I would go ahead and mark off C and then I would be receiving the clue and vice versa if it ended up landing on broadcast. Now, if you end up landing on the police badge, you will be able to actually call another player over for what is called a conference. Basically, what this means is, let's just say, okay, Yellow, I want a conference with you. He's going to have to come all the way over here, and again, you're going to have an opportunity to get some information from him in the same way as you did landing on the space. So again, you'll look at the receive and broadcast, and the uh, same rules apply as if you had landed on uh, the same space as another player. So ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to be driving around trying to collect all these clues and uh, hopefully trying to uh, receive some clues from other players. And then once you are confident enough to try to guess whoever the culprit is, you're going to go ahead and say, okay, I, know, I think I know who it is, and you're going to go ahead and venture a guess. And then you're going to pull this out and then look at the back. Uh, we're doing robbery over here. And so this is the person that committed the robbery. So if I had said that this person had committed the robbery, I will have won the game. However, if I guess wrong, I'm going to be out of the game. And the winner of the game is going to be the one that is going to be able to figure out who committed the crime. So, my final thoughts on the game Manhunt. Well, I like this game. This is a pretty cool little game. Uh, this is a light game. Uh, one of the unique elements is that you can actually uh, call other cars back to you if you land on one of those bad spaces and attempt to see if you can uh, get information from them. However, it may backfire, as you well know. Uh, rather unique strategy there because if you have an opponent that's pretty close to some numbers that he doesn't have yet, you can try to get him to the opposite side of the board uh, going on to the bads to try to slow them down. And also, I like the fact that you have to land on these things by exact count. Uh, it makes the game a lot harder, in my opinion. Uh, but you do have some choices. Just because you end up rolling a number that may not bring you to one location, it might actually get to bring you to the other location. So while you're rolling, you're kind of having to figure out, okay, what should I do? Because ultimately, what I try to do when I play this game is I try to end up on a space where I have the greatest chance of being able to land on either a badge or on a location to where I could try to get some clues, um, etc. Like the electric uh, crime computer, uh, quite a unique little gadget, I must say. Uh, when I first ended up getting this game, the gadget did not work. And uh, I opened it up and I somehow managed to fix the thing just by cleaning it out a little bit. And the other thing is, is I got this game at a, uh, what was it, an antique store, and it was missing a bunch of parts. But fortunately, I went on Board Game Geek and I uh, asked somebody if they had the parts to send me, and they said that they did, and they were so nice to me. They sent these things to me for no charge at all. So I gave them a lot of what's called geek gold and thanked them very much. So, uh, so it was a rather interesting uh, journey to get a complete 
game of this. Now, the last time we played this, I actually kind of had to venture a guess uh, because it came down to two people, and my wife was just about to uh, win the game, I thought, and I actually ended up guessing right. Um, so that was pretty cool. I would say this game probably cost about $20 or so if you wanted to go and buy it somewhere. Um, it's not hard to learn. Uh, the instructions are maybe a couple of pages or so. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty cool little vintage game. Uh, I would recommend picking it up if you are into light little uh, games that take some deduction. But uh, even so, there's a lot of characters that you have to go through uh, to figure out who had done it. So anyway, pretty cool little game. Guys, that's my review. I hope you all have a great day. Keep on gaming.